Uh, good day, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so here we've got Gabriele Ponzo, uh, the chairman of the membership committee uh, of the Document Foundation. Uh, he'll be talking about how to get involved in the Document Foundation um, as a member. Um, well, here is Gabriele Ponzo. Uh, give him a warm round of applause. Let's uh, see what he has to say. Thank you. Thank you and thank you, everybody. Um, I'm here to try uh, having and building a, a local Bulgarian LibreOffice community. Because from what I know, uh, we have someone here and there, but I would like to have more representative for your, from your country in our project and so in our foundation as well. So this is the agenda. Um, what I want to say is that we have plenty of people for, from all around the world in our community and in our project. And that's why, again, I want to have an equal representative from every part of the world, including Bulgaria. Uh, obviously, they speak a lot of languages and uh, they have the most diverse competences and skills. And this is something we are going to uh, dig in really uh, soon. But most of all, important is that we don't have just developers. Obviously, developers are always welcome because we need them, and without them, we, we, we wouldn't have any kind of uh, LibreOffice suit. But uh, even if you are not a developer, you may be useful, you may collaborate and commit to our project. Indeed, we, are, we have this community which is really open and inclusive in many senses, I mean, not, all, not only the gender, but also the cultures and whatever, we don't distinct in any way uh, anyone who want to join. Uh, obviously, becoming LibreOffice users is uh, the very first step, because at least you have to know what is LibreOffice and uh, become, become confident with it. But then, when you uh, understand what is behind the project, when you can appreciate the project, the program, appreciate its functionalities, its features, and uh, you may see and understand that behind it there are, a lot of, there are a lot of volunteers, you may want to join those volunteers and get in the community. Usually everyone has a passion, a hobby, uh, and, and particular skills, and most of the times uh, it is possible to apply to, uh, to use those skills within the project as well. For example, um, I used to be a DJ you know, when I was young, and that led me to become also a professional speaker, and that's why the Italian official voice of LibreOffice is me, for example. But just because I like it, I enjoy it, I have fun speaking. So every time that we have official videos, which are first of all in English, the dubbing in Italian is made by me. Um, it's just about having some spare time to dedicate to the project and do what makes fun, obviously. We don't ask, it's volunteering, so you have to have fun doing that. We will never ask to uh, do something against your, I mean, uh, volunteer or um, something good, which is boring or whatever. As you may know, obviously, being here, most of the open source software lets you do a lot of things for almost zero cost. You know that free software doesn't mean free as a price, but in the case of LibreOffice, it is. So the question is to think about giving something, something back to the project. So you won't pay for the software, you will save money, for the license, and, but you still have something really, uh, a, a good productivity suite, and you can so uh, use it for your own, for your business. Uh, bear in mind that uh, LibreOffice is multi-platform. This means that can run on, Libre, on, sorry, on Windows, on Linux, and on Macintosh in the very same way. What I want to say is that, for example, Microsoft Word in uh, Macintosh behaves a little bit differently respect of uh, Microsoft Word in Windows, from what I know, but I may be wrong. But I've seen some kind of slight different. While LibreOffice is exactly the same uh, code base, 
So the very same application is running in Windows, Linux, and uh, Macintosh, and lets you do a lot of things. So giving back means not give back some money, even if, if, if you want, you are free to do that, obviously, as a donation. But what I'm here to say is to give back as time. So committing and contributing, contributing to the project somehow. That's the spirit of our members. Every now, everyone knows uh, what LibreOffice is, obviously. But probably, raise your hands if you know what is Document Liberation Project. No one here. OK, just briefly, it's a part of the project which is, let's say, in charge to develop the filters. The filters are the part of code are responsible for importing and exporting in the various formats. So if in LibreOffice you are able to open Microsoft Office formats, docx, xls, x, and whatever, it's just because there is the document liberation project. But bear in mind that this project has to share with LibreOffice, but not only. For example, even Caligra, or Inkscape, or Scribus, and many other uh, open source software, they use our filters, let's say our, in the philosophy of open source software. You know, you, we share the sharing community, the sharing economy. So we share these pieces of code, and we have let, for example, Inkscape um, being able to open Corel Draw files, for example. That's the document liberation project, which is not so famous as the LibreOffice itself. This is a picture from our conference in Brno, in Czech Republic. And um, the symbols there means that uh, this way? No, OK. I don't care. I mean, the, 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 the straight symbol is the LibreOffice, as you can see. The other one, the slanted one, is for document liberation. This means that all these kind of things you can do, you could do for both the projects, but something just for LibreOffice. Uh, some of you, of you may have seen already this presentation because I used to recycle, let's say, but this is my role in the community and in the foundation, so it's my <laughs> precise role to uh, enroll and to recruit people for the community. This is me. Uh, there and the lower side is in Brno again. It was an interview, and, and the upper side is in Almeria. This is to say that one of the things that could have could been made for the community is marketing. So conferences, seminars, uh, trainings, or promotion locally, globally, or both. And promotional stuff, just like photos, presentation, videos, as I used to do, interviews show, TV shows, so sooner or later I would love to have some kind of this stuff. And social network interactions. So even, for example, caring of our Twitter account or Facebook account or whatever is a kind of a way to contribute to the project. And it, it is recognized. So what are you waiting for? Are you shy? <laughs> Come on. Um, another area in which you co can collaborate is documentation. Documentation means manuals. And imagine that, for example, just um, Writer, which is the word processing part of LibreOffice, its manual is something like uh, 500 and more pages. Just Writer. Then you have Calc, you have Impress, you have Draw, and you have Base. All the components of the LibreOffice suite. Online help pages, wiki pages, and uh, the file format papers, because this is a documentation for the document liberation project. This is something uh, somewhere there where they uh, used to write, you know, the specification of the documents and whatever. And support others is still a form of documentation, meaning that you, you give, you know, support, you, you may uh, reply to emails in the mailing list, for example, or IRC channel, or on social networks, we have Ask uh, website, Reddit, and Facebook, and whatever. So this is, uh, this attains to the documentation area. So that's perfect also for people who is shine, because you are behind your keyboard and you no, don't show in public, for example. Then we have translation. Translation is a lot of stuff 
because we have to translate, first of all, manuals, because the manuals are, are written in uh, English. So when we talk about documentation, we talk about manuals, we are talking about writing manuals in English. Here we are talking about translating from English to Bulgarian, in your case, or Italian, or whatever. Online help, website, wiki pages, LibreOffice in interface itself, because if you have, I don't know, the translation of file, edit, and whatever, and format in Bulgarian, but someone has done. Probably this man, uh, Mihail Balavnov, okay, probably. And uh, as I see, he's the most contributor, followed by, followed by Stoyan. And, uh, <laughs> okay, and marketing stuff, because the presentations, or subtitles to the videos, or flyers, you know, paper, all kind of, you know, promotional stuff need to be translated in your native language. We call it NLP, Native Language Projects. And bear in mind also that English is not strictly required because in manuals you have also the pictures, which are screenshot. Well, about a screenshot, you don't need to know English. You just have to uh, open LibreOffice, do the very same thing you see um, in the in English manual. So open the, the, the third menu, for example, and the fourth uh, row in the menu without knowing English. You just have to open the very same uh, dialogue or menu or whatever, take the screenshot, and you have committed to the translation as well. Then we have the quality assurance area. Uh, what you can see there are stickers we used to uh, ship to people who contribute in quality assurance, especially during the bug hunting sessions. But let's start from bug triaging. Triaging means that uh, we have Bugzilla, which is our platform for the bug uh, report list. Then you may choose one, re one bug, maybe one that is annoying you. And uh, what you have to do to try age is just try reproducing that bug. Uh, this is, I put this for first just because it's uh, propodetic, it's uh, a training way to then submit your bugs. Because before, before submitting, submitting any bug, you should know how does it work. So, uh, in this case, um, you'll see that the bug list is um, just, we call it the monkey list, because you have just one open LibreOffice, two open writer, let's say, three open the menu. So, everyone should be able to reproduce the bug, and really quickly, because volunteers can't waste that, their time to, to bug triaging, or, may, or better, they should be able to uh, triage the most, the many bugs they can in the, in the time they have. So, when you get used to it, you may try submitting your bugs. And then there are the, these campaigns called bug hunting. This is something we used to do usually two weeks before a new release. It's a weekend in, the, in which you may uh, contribute hunting for bugs explicitly, so the two days dedicated for that. And uh, you can get in touch with developers and QA managers via IRC ch channel, so you may have an, an immediate feedback on, it, on that in that period. Then there are the broken links reporting, because on the online help sometimes it happens that you press F1 on the keyboard. Let's say you are in Calc and you are watching the formula, let's say search. You press F1 and maybe that the online help doesn't point to exactly to that argument, to that topic. So in this case you should signal, you should report that there is a broken link between, you know, the, the area you were watching the program and the, the topic on the guide, on the, the online help. Then preparing files for input-export filters, because to test if the filters work, you need to have some uh, sample documents. And this is something really important. And also uh, layout mismatch reporting. This means that, for example, if you are used to um, use both Microsoft Office, for example, and LibreOffice, and you see that some uh, document looks different between the two thirds, this is something you can report. There is also a procedure to anonymize the document, to, so to remove all the stuff unnecessary to de-diagnose. Uh, 
and then you can send the, 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 the document anonymized, and this helps a lot. But bear in mind that most of the times the, the problems are about the um, rendering of the documents, different rendering of the documents um, between the two suits, is about how they are being written. Because most of the people, unfortunately, are not educated to use the uh, word processing, for example. They are convinced that word processing is just like a typewriter, which is not true, definitely. So that's also perfect for no, not so technical people, and it can become really exciting, especially when you submit a bug, and you see that it may last one week or one year, it depends. But what I suggest in this case is to do some social networking, meaning that when you submit a, submit a bug, try um, making it public, try attracting people to comment on it, because the, m the more uh, reaction, the more posts and comments we you have on a bug, the more that bug will be uh, noticed and highlighted and maybe fixed and solved. Remember that we are almost all volunteer, so uh, it's up to any developer to take care of a bug if he's entrust, interested in it and if it loves it, I mean, if it finds funny to, to work on it. Then there is a design area. Uh, design, design means uh, templates, because mm, so you don't need to be a designer or uh, an artist, let's say, because maybe you have in your office you have some kind of particular stuff, particular document you need, and you prepare a template. Then you may think and may want to share publicly, just because maybe that another office of another company may need the very same kind of document. That's a template. Or the user interface. You, here you can see the uh, two. This is a dialog. This is a find and replace, search and replace. It's in Italian, just because I'm Italian. And uh, the other one is the sidebar of the program. This is something that someone take, took care of designing. And imagine that, to be honest, especially for dialogues, you don't need to work on the source code of LibreOffice because there are the UI files. So if you have Glade, which is a software on Linux um, to design you know, the user interfaces, you may modify your own copy of LibreOffice and you may, for example, put this button here without compiling, without modifying LibreOffice itself. Because all the user interface, not all, not all, but most of the user interface um, uh, descriptions are in these separate files. So keep in mind this. And uh, if you feel an artist, you may want to design icons or other parts of the software, or clip parts, or most of these kind of things. So you, if you feel creative, raise your hands, and you are all welcome. Great, great. Remember, the goal of this is to create a local community. I, I strongly am here for the very first time, and I will uh, next year for sure, because I enjoyed a lot compliments to the organization, it's really cool. But my goal is to have a Bulgarian LibreOffice community as soon as possible. Then we move to something more technical. This is uh, the infrastructure, because all the project obviously needs to have some kind of infra infrastructure. We have Bugzilla, which I mentioned before, to report bugs. We have Garrett, which is a platform where we vote for patches. So imagine that uh, he's a developer and he uh, fixes a bug in some way, but it is not immediately merged in the source code, in the branch, in the master branch. It needs to be voted by other developers. Then we have OpenGrok, which is an open, um, I'm sorry, which is a search engine, because keep in mind that we have 20 million code lines in LibreOffice, which sounds scary, I know, and that's why we have OpenGrok, because if you have to quickly search with, between you know, uh, search files, it, it's the best way. But we'll see that it, it shouldn't scare new developers. Then we have the Wiki, the Tinderbox, Nextcloud, Redmine, Silverstripe, and also, I forgot to mention, we have LibreOffice Online which is the online version of, of LibreOffice, which is installed in our infrastructure, but which is 
always open source, so you may want to install in your company or in your school or whatever, in your servers, I mean. So, uh, but all these servers need to, to be maintained, so maintenance is needed, and uh, we have two at least two employees, maybe two and a half, uh, one is part-time, I'm not sure, but it should be that. But anyway, volunteering is always welcome for that uh, role as well. So, as I told you, here begins some more technical things. You don't need to be a developer to, to care about the infrastructure, but neither completely agnostic. I mean, something about scripting, you know, bash, something like that usually is mm, required. And finally, last but not least, obviously, there is the development. Uh, but uh, keep in mind that development could be also just writing macros. But be aware that, especially from my point of view, mm, sometimes we have troubles migrating, we say, from uh, LibreOffice to, sorry, from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice uh, because of the macros. Remember that most of the times macros are not needed, not required. What I mean is that uh, what happens is that people use macros, but they weren't needed. I mean, they could have done the very same thing just using regular features of the software or formulas in Calc, for example. But who knows why they used to uh, go writing macros. Maybe they are more familiar with that than knowing perfectly all the features of the software. Then we have extensions, which is a step up, which is an improvement of macros. And then we have easy hacks. Easy hacks are little bugs in the, in the LibreOffice software, which, is, which are too simple for core developers, for experienced developers, and they intentionally leave for newcomers and beginners. Yes, to, not to get scared by the rest of the source code of LibreOffice. Then, obviously, there are the core developers. And they have a uh, public IRC channel, which is LibreOffice-Dev. And then we have ACFES. We have one uh, at least twice per year. One is at our conference, and the second one is at FOSDEM in Brussels. But we use also to organize all the ones if needed and if we can. And I am trying to do with the uh, us. is it correct? With that school? Maybe we'll have a NACFest in your school, I hope. We'll see. I'm trying to arrange it. Okay. So if there are any aspiring or already developer in the room, please join. Oh, there are also free workshops, which are different because HackFest is where our developers stand uh, beside you and teach you how to get in the code, but they don't teach you how to code. I mean, they teach you how to get within the LibreOffice code, how does it work, our instruments, Garrett, and whatever, but you should already uh, know how to develop in C++. Be aware that 95% of LibreOffice is C++. While workshops, in the workshops, they teach how to develop in C++. Why to contribute? First of all, satisfaction. I don't know you, but for me, uh, to help the others is the most satisfactional thing I could do, really. But generally speaking, not, not exactly about speaking about LibreOffice. It's something I really love. When I can help any other, I'm so happy. In particular, you may feel part of a project and feel useful to other people and to you other users of the project, obviously, if you improve the project. Get in touch with the community, especially in such events just like this one or our conference or whatever. And in this venues, you may meet different people and different cultures. Remember, we have people from all around the world, Chinese, uh, Japanese, Taiwanese, uh, Arab, and uh, American, Canadian, South American. We just, to be honest, we're just lacking f some Africa. We're just lacking people from Africa. We are striving, I am striving to achieve this, but it's not that easy. Um, being recognized by others. This is also uh, really satisfactional because first, 
First of all, when you contribute to the project, your, your name will be listed in the website. So you'll be part of. And then in the venues, you may be, it may happen uh, to me, it happened in the past, that someone, oh, you are the one who, I, who is in the videos, in the interview, I saw you. Oh, great, <laughs> thank you. It is something, yes, it gives, to me, it gives uh, satisfaction. And then you may encourage other people to join, uh, as I, I'm doing right now. Grow your knowledge, because anyway, as I told to your colleague, let's say, uh, this, is, this can be a way to grow your knowledge of C++, or, generally speaking, of an um, open source project, so collaborating to an open source project in any of those ways we have seen. And from my point of view, anyway, if, even if you, for example, uh, decide to um, collaborate on videos, you may improve your video editing skills. So in any way you are going to contribute, probably you will improve your skills. And then you may use the, these skills and this knowledge um, as a reference for a job application. I've been asked to uh, testify with the certificate, and I did it. It's no problem to me. Then, if you are particularly good in developing, you may fix your bugs. Or, you, if you are particularly good in friendship and, uh, you know, human-related, you may get them fixed. And as I said, you may find your name in the credit list. And finally, you may make the difference because every little step, every little leap is something that improves the project and makes a difference. So if you like to meet people and discover different cultures and have fun and eat together, <laughs> we are all similar. Because this is, from my point of view, this is also interesting because the social events related to the, to the venues and whatever, I really like and enjoy it a lot because even talking about, you know, the weather, I mean, or, you know, talking about whatever, with different cultures, you may uh, get a different perspective, and it is always interesting. Now we talk about the Document Foundation membership, because until now, we, ta we have talked about being part of the project and thus part of the community, which is obviously free in and free out. You may come in and come out of our community whenever you want, and uh, there is no sign-in, no registration, nothing at all. While to be part of the foundation, know that, please know that the Document Foundation is the foundation with uh, headquarters in Berlin, in Germany, which is behind the LibreOffice project. It is our organization. Why would you want to could you want to be part of, a mem um, of the membership and so of the, of the foundation? You may want to uh, improve your position as a volunteer, as a committer, because you can take part of a governance. This means that you can vote for the board of directors or, and or for the membership committee. And that's how and why I am the chairman of this membership committee, just because I candidated myself, and the rest of the community, especially Thailand, <laughs> but not only, they voted for me, and at the end I was within the um, membership committee. And then, this is the third... No, yes, 14... Yeah, the third turn for me, and, uh, and recently I've become the, the chairman, because whenever you are inside and you are well known, uh, the next elections you may got more votes, especially if you do something noticeable and something interesting for the project. That's it. Um, you can feel an ambassador much more if you are entitled, if you are part of the project and part of the foundation itself. So you, you, you feel more entitled to, to be an ambassador of the project. Have fun always, because we are always talking about volunteering, even if you are a member of the foundation. Anyway, it's free for free, not paid. Get satisfaction again, be the growth of our project, and get travel support. Obviously, this is not a reason to become a member, but it's a plus. I mean, I'm here <clears throat> 
thanks to this also. And for example, for me, it's the very first time I'm in Bulgari and in Sofia. So I had the chance to visit your beautiful city and country thanks to this venue and thanks to the Document Foundation who is going to refund me the expenses of flight, trains and uh, hotel. Then there are the certifications. Uh, you, you may get certified for, as a developer or as a trainer, just like I am, and as a migration expert, as I am. We have a, a complex, well, let's say not complex, coded um, migration process, but we may talk about this later in case. And then, again, find a job as a TDF employee, who knows, most of us, no, not most, sorry, many of us have become employees of the foundation, or as a contractor, or as an, a self-employed, just like I am, in the ecosystem, or as an employee for a company involved in our ecosystems system. So, how to become a member? Just contributing on a regular basis. This means that uh, what we look for is this regularity. It's volunteering, so it is, you don't have to every single week donate one hour of your time. Now and then, whenever you want. But the important thing is that it is not once. That is. Because we had also in the Albanian community, which is lovely, they used to make rush. They call them springs. So they uh, meet each other physically in a, in a room. And they, for example, translate the whole LibreOffice in uh, Albanian, which is cool and fine, but it's just once. And for our statute, I can't, I couldn't, and I can't admit them as a member. So they have to do something now and then. <coughs> then you have to apply, uh, just filling in a form. And then the membership committee checks if you have already done something. So that's why I first... I have talked about the, the uh, community and then the membership. And if we see that you have already done something, and so you are active in our community, and so you know how the project works, you may become a member and then vote, and we voted and whatever. That was all. I hope to haven't been too boring. And uh, if you have any questions, I think we have time for them, isn't it? So in the meanwhile, thank you. Oh, any? Uh, so we've got a question here. Here we go. Uh, thank you. Um, my question is uh, regarding any opportunities uh, for companies to collaborate uh, with the, the Document Foundation. Um, for instance, offering support for migrating um, clients. But good point. you probably know better than me. Yeah, no, good point. Yes. Uh, uh, let's say that as, um, we, we can accept as a member of the foundation just uh, person, physical persons, but we have the advisory board, which is uh, meant for the companies, and we have several companies there, just like Google, for example, as well, if I'm not wrong. Uh, but we have uh, most of all Collabora and CIB, which are the most active companies. What they can do is, from, for our statute, they may donate money with a limit of 20k euros, not more than this. This is to avoid the taking over. Because in the past, I didn't tell you the story of LibreOffice, but you may find it in the internet. But we had some kind of these troubles in the past. We had a company who, was taking, who did take over, and so who was controlling. Fortunately, they were good people, but by the way, we don't want to have such kind of situation again. So there is a money limit. There is no limit in people donating. People donating means that, for example, um, Red Hat, if I'm not wrong, they should have something like uh, four. I'm not sure because I'm, I'm not in the, in the advisory board. They should, I mean, anyway, they have many people working for us full time. So they pay their salary, but they work for the liberal office. And that's how uh, most of the code is developed, to be honest, because we have um, thousands of volunteers, really, but the, the, the real core, 
development team is made of uh, paid people by those companies. So this is one. The second thing to, to say about this is that on our website we have a list of, um, let's say, partners, which are companies or individuals who are certified and so are entrusted to, um, to operate on our software. And then, if you like, we, we may talk about the certification, no, sorry, the uh, migration protocol, for example, if you, uh, unless many of you want to know about that. But for the moment, we'll keep it as a further question. Cool, uh, one more. Hey, um, I wanted to ask, is there a possibility of contribution outside of tech, like for example UI, UX, um, yeah, anything non-technical? Yes, uh, maybe you joined later. It is. We have the design team, which is UI, UX indeed, and you may uh, want to participate and collaborate in that one, uh, with icons, dialogues, or whatever you want. And uh, yes, there is, um, there is a, a, a good community as well in that, in that area. I mean, and we have also an employee <coughs> of the foundation who is re responsible for this area. So he's, let's say, coordinating the works of these kind of volunteers. And, uh, and yes, yes, please, please join. Also, keep in mind that, yes, yes, please, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, all the, the promotional stuff, just like, you know, uh, signs or flyers or videos or logos. On. So, for example, we have a contest right now because next year, the 2020, will be 10 years of LibreOffice and 20 years of the project, including OpenOffice. Okay? So we are trying to create a logo for this e particular year, celebrating this, and uh, which will... Uh, uh, bring us through the whole here. So you may want to participate in that as well. Uh, in the LibreOffice website there is a um, contribute area. You may see there the various mailing, mailing lists and one of them is exp explicitly for the UI UX. And please join first the mailing. This is valid for everyone in any field, in any area. Uh, first join the mailing list and say hello I am Gabriele, I would like to uh, collaborate with this project in this area, and they will all answer, welcome, uh, we are lacking in this area, for example, if you like it, or otherwise do whatever you will, we wish and you want, and uh, please join, please. Hey, uh, what is the situation with uh, LibreOffice Online and Collabora? Because uh, I, I was just trying also to, to set up uh, Nextcloud with uh, LibreOffice Online. Uh, how is the process? They're contributing to the pro uh, project and they have a fork of it? Uh, what's the uh, let's say that, from what I know, uh, they are, if I'm not wrong, the most contributors to the LibreOffice Online, Collabora, but even CIB is working on that. Uh, let's say that until today we have two versions, which is, let's say, the open version, which is open source and freely downloadable, and then they have their own version. The code base is really close to e each other. They say that e they, <coughs> sorry, they used to um, have some extra feature that they release later on. You know, let's say that they implement some new feature, they keep from themselves for a while, and then they release it in the in the open source version. So they uh, work parallelly or almost. And uh, it is free, and it's um, possible to download the Collabora, uh, sorry, the <laughs> the LibreOffice Online, and install it uh, alone or side by side with Nextcloud, indeed, which is a uh, good joint because uh, you may, you know, um, browse the files and then open an edit directly online in the very same platform or looking so. And uh, what is happening in the foundation right now? They are discussing about that, so um, I can't reveal too much. Let's say that we are trying to create a brand for third-party released LibreOffice and LibreOffice Online. This is something work in progress, so 
again. But mm, we are working on this. Just because at the moment, for example, we have LibreOffice Vanilla, we call it Vanilla, which is the free and uh, open source one. Then we have LibreOffice uh, Collabora Office, which is the LibreOffice made and customized by Collabora. And then we have CIB LibreOffice, so there is a little bit of mess. So we decided to have a kind of sub-branding, something like, do you remember Intel Inside? Something like that, you know? So you have HP, you have Dell, you have many trademarks who makes the computer, the, the hardware, but you have the, the, stick, the sticker with Intel inside. Something like that. They are working on this. And, uh, but um, it will become public, I think, soon. And now it is, um, <laughs> anyway, because I told, the, I told you. Is there any question? Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay, let's uh, give Gabriele a round of applause and thank you for coming.